Hey, what's up guys? So you know, aquarium keeping is gaining in popularity all the time. And in that hobby, saltwater keeping is growing even faster. And in that saltwater hobby, keeping and cultivating corals is really gaining in popularity. So I'm here in Forest Lake, Minnesota at this really unassuming little pet shop. But as unassuming as the front is, wait till you guys see the amazing saltwater fish room that is at this little pet shop called Forest Lake Pets. So in this video, we're we're gonna get a tour of the saltwater fish room at Forest Lake Pets with the owners, Mike and Chris, as they show off some of the most amazing corals and what it takes to keep and maintain corals in your aquarium. They are the owners here at Forest Lake Pets. We are in the saltwater room back here, but look who else is over here real quick. So there's Tyler, he takes care of all the corals. Look at these t-shirts John and Ashley are wearing. Man, way to represent, that is awesome. All right, so those, that's the merch for the Reptile Channel. Those links are in the description below if you are not watching Dave Kaufman's Reptile Adventures. Nicely done. All right, so let's get back to the corals. Uh, so. Tell me a little bit about the shop. Yeah, for sure. So we've been here for about 28, 28 years, years now, now. Yeah. so 28 years. And so uh, my brother and I recently took over the family business about four years ago. So this is one of the biggest improvements that we've done to the store here is remodel the whole saltwater department. And we set it up so we've got a couple different display tanks here as well as our main display over here. These are where we've got all the little fragments of the corals. Frags is what everybody calls sure. them. So the frags of the corals here. Then we try to take part of it done in house of stuff that we're growing here, as well as things that we will bring in large colonies and break them up um, for customers to pick up themselves. Um, we set up two different systems here, and the big difference is we set them up for different types of corals. So, like, there's three main types of corals basically, and so what we have is we have softies, we have large polyp stony corals as well as small polyp stony corals and so they all have slightly different requirements whereas like SPS are typically a more high-end type of coral and we have those primarily displayed over here and this tank here it's primarily SPS dominant a few LPS and then the other tank over here is primarily softy driven as well as there are some large polyp stony corals so corals are a symbiotic relationship between algae and the coral itself and so what happens is these guys are eating non-stop 24 7 they're eating all day right here i have a mixture of different kinds of plankton there is phytoplankton in here which is your plant-based plankton um, like different kinds of algae and stuff and there's also zooplankton which is more animal based like little critters that are floating around in the ocean and plankton is really kind of a very broad description for um, multiple you know types of little different kinds of algaes and critters so like it it looks like kind of like some muddy water here but i will show you kind of how uh coral eats and you can see that the feeder tentacles will pull it into a central mouth area you know kind of closing it up there and they're just they're grabbing the particles and putting it into their stomach and then after they've done that successfully they'll reach out for more they get most of their nutrients from the algae that lives in their tissues but this is how they physically collect nutrients also without the coral. So you can see they're kind of closing up there. That's basically them just stuffing the plankton into their mouth with their stinging tentacles, basically. If these were wild plankton, like zooplankton, if it was an animal, it would get stuck on the stinging, stinging tentacles, which are kind of like little harpoons. There's an algae in the coral called zoanthilla, that which what that does is, is it is growing on the outside of the shell of the coral. And Corals, the majority of the corals are the stomach. And so it's a stomach that's constantly taking in food, nutrients from the water, and then feeding, That's it's gonna turn that into food, into sugars, fats, for the coral to grow the structure. The actual, that algae does like 
90% of the actual the work for the coral itself. It's a really cool relationship. They're actually distant relatives of jellyfish, um, and they're also relatives of anemones. Right. So, yeah, real fun stuff. So we're looking at these corals here. So these are little frags down here we'll start with. Yeah, and so down here too, there's different montiporos down in there, and as well as like bird's nest, acroporos. Those are Duncan corals, so that's one of those large polyp stony corals, whereas all that other stuff, all those little hairs and frills on there, those are the small polyps. And that Duncan there, he's got large polyps, and that's a bigger mouth than the other ones do. That guy, there's a Pavona coral, also called the cactus coral, real fun one. They do have some stingers on them, so some corals can actually sting each other. Some have longer stingers than others. Some are more toxic than others. So sometimes if you have two corals together, they don't like each other, you kind of have chemical warfare going on. Right. they fighting each other in the tank. Right. A really sweet up above here, that green chalice, that plating coral, and they're just a really cool stunner color of a chalice coral, something fun that we've been growing up for a while. And a lot of different acropores now on the top here. And so all these little, some people call them twigs in the hobby, so the different stick corals that, um, those are mainly skeleton, and so that's that, that skeleton that they build up, and the skeletons are the big builders in the reef. I mean, that's what reefs are built, built off of, and that's mainly SPS driven. Really sweet neon green one in there. This is where all these corals even too, like there's different kinds of reptile color morphs, there's all kinds of different right. acropora color morphs, as well as like, so even too in this tank, we have another softy coral up here. That's called a zoanthid, and that's where there's tons of different colors. There's different, they got names to them that they, people give them. We got some like Rosa, Rasta zoanthids here, and there's a lot of different ones that, different designer types of zoanthids. Right to the right of it down here, we've got a trumpet coral, or some people call them a candy cane coral. The blue one right there that's kind of vibrant is a, a blue cup coral. When it grows into a large colony, it will form a cup shaped. You have Montecoras in here. If you can see, it's a brown coral, and the little tiny green heads on that are the actual, is the mouth of the coral. So each head that you see on there is actually its own individual coral polyp. And it's like a, just a colony of all these different animals living together that forms that one piece of coral. All right, so that's what's on this side of this tank. So we've got another tank over here. Yeah, and this one's dominant in soft corals as well as the large polyp stony corals. And so down in here, there's a few main ones, like some of the common ones are called mushrooms. And so there's a lot of different mushroom corals in here. We've got a lot of leather corals, zoanthids, as well as things for the, on the side of the large pulp stony corals, we've got hammer corals and we've got frog spawns and we have some various, um, also some trumpet corals, some, some of the acans in there as well. A lot of cool ones in there. So this is a mushroom colony. There's tons of different mushrooms on there. A really popular one and easy going for most coral keepers. That's a great beginner coral to get into really easy to care for, and that's all soft tissue there, so a soft coral there. And then right next door on the bottom there, that's, that's a type of zoanthid, or that's actually a palithoa, which is a relative of a zoanthid. Another easy to keep beginner coral. Some people, it grows so well in their tank that they consider it a weed, and they don't even want it in their tank as you're getting more advanced into the hobby. Well, the crazy thing about zoanthids is they have a deadly toxin, and it's something where natives in certain countries have actually used their toxins as a way to capture animals in the in nature kind of like a poison dart frog yeah just don't lick them you know that's something don't chew on them that's probably a <laughs> preferred method of staying away from that part of it in here we've got a few different kinds of trumpet or candy cane corals and they come in different colors as well so a wide variety of colors down here we have acans acanthostria and so these are all large polyps as well and these are all this is a big polyp here that takes in food and keeps growing off of those polyps. Next door, we've got a few different kinds of zoanthids. And this one's actually called the Rasta zoanthid. It looks kind of like a Rasta cap, so a real cool oddball color morph of that there. And back here, we've got some different, these are hammer corals. And so even too, if we get them to kind of gently close up, you can see that these are big polyps here, large polyp stonies large polyps there that close up and they'll take in food that way. So yeah, and down here's another Cephastria trumpet coral hanging out right here. That's even 
different color than the other one, so kind of a green hue to it. And then these are a giant polyp. These are lobophilia, but these have a real big mouth to them, real big polyps, come in all colors. Some of them are even rainbow colored. And we've got a huge colony there of green star polyps. It's a great beginner coral, grows really well. That's what most beginners want. They want good growth. They want things that are gonna take over and wave in the tank and grow there. And it's an encrusting coral, so it's gonna keep growing on the corals on the rocks in the, that you have in the tank and just keep growing and expanding from there. And that one there's a toadstool leather coral. Real fun one, easy to keep. Soft coral, so that's all soft tissue there. And they grow in the toadstool, toadstool shape. We've got more leather corals. And so there's some various different types in here, as well as a big, like some of them grow, that's another one actually similar to the toadstool and back on the right, as well as some other ones there. Um, this one they actually call a cabbage coral in front here because it actually grows like a head of cabbage on it. Sure. Well, it's very easy to see why they call those leather corals. The stalks basically look like leather. And they feel like leather too. It's, it's pretty crazy. Over here, we have a bunch more of our frags. And so these are pieces that we're taking a large colony and cutting them up into other pieces. There's some hammer corals that we had. Those are actually come in from a local customer that has a really great job taking care of them. They brought in a huge head of them with multiple heads on there really cool coral and a bunch of different zoanthids, a bunch of different colors, big mushroom rock there. All right, so when it comes down to setting up the whole tank and getting things going, basically you're gonna need a few things to get everything going, but it all comes down to starting out with a, a fish tank that you wanna start with the size and the dimensions. You wanna be conscious of how deep the tank is as well, because light has to penetrate down, corals photosynthesize, it's very important that they get some light down to them, and the farther the light has to push through the water, the less actual usable light there is. So it's, it's good to take that into account when you're setting up the tank and purchasing a tank. A lot of reef keepers use a sump setup and what that is is the tank will actually overflow into a sump in the bottom which is almost like an aquarium. And it makes it, it's a nice setup because what you can do is set down there various filtration parts. And when it comes to a tank, there's three main types of filtration. You have chemical, mechanical and biological filtration. So biological is the most important. That's the heartbeat of an aquarium. What happens is good bacteria grows on every square inch of rock, of gravel, of sand, on the sides of the glass, and that breaks down fish waste. And so we have a lot of live rock in the tank. The live rock lets those good bacteria grow on there, breaks down fish waste. We always have a pump in our sump that's gonna pump the water back up into the aquarium. A lot of people use wave makers because the ocean has a lot of water movement in there. And by having those wave makers in there, that helps recreate the ocean environment. Another important tool is a protein skimmer. And a protein skimmer skims out proteins, skims out waste out of the aquarium before it breaks down in the ammonia cycle. The ammonia cycle is part of that bacterial filtration. Some people use various chemical filtrations. If we're having issues, minor issues along the way, we can use chemical filtration. Uh, as well as mechanical, usually people have things like filter socks in the aquarium. Or if you have a hang on the back filter, you have mechanical filtration where it's in those pads that sit in the back of the aquarium. Sure. And these are all important things. And you always have to think of a really suitable high output light because the light is going to be super important if we're going to do corals. Now some people want to do just a fish only tank and that's totally cool. We can set it up. We don't have to do any of the corals in the tank. And then we don't have to worry as much about the lighting in there. Um, and so we want to do a lot of live rock, create some good habitat and structure in there for the fish to swim through. So this is the overflow for the sump style setup. And so what this does is all the water's overflowing into the back compartment here. And then pumps are sitting down in the bottom in the sump that pump water back in through these two outputs here, keeping good current flowing through the aquarium. So Plants. that there is a deep sand bed. And what that does is it allows bacteria that actually complete the nitrogen cycle. So anaerobic bacteria grows in that bed and convert nitrites and the nitrates into a nitrogen gas and gas off that nutrient source. Gotcha. All right, so if somebody is just getting into keeping corals, you know, is all of this necessary or is there a more simple way to keep corals? There are several ways to keep corals. Like there's that, several ways to keep any type of animal. And sometimes too, you're gonna to find some people like certain things over other things. This is a really nice setup. Having a sump setup is really nice because you hide a lot of your equipment down in there. So you hide your protein skimmer down there, you're hiding your pumps in there. 
And by hiding a lot of those things, it cleans the whole area up. You can put your heaters in there as well to keep a consistent temperature. It just gives a very clean setup. You can set up a tank without an overflow and have hang on the back style filters, have various wave makers in the tank, and you can set it up that way as well. And there's, there's not always one right way. There's a lot of different ways to get to the solution of having a healthy ecosystem. All right, so moving on to this amazing tank. Wow, I love the, uh, I love that kind of stone arch type of design you have in there. Yeah, that's a really sweet product by Caribsi. Really huge three foot arch in there. It's something that people really like the look of it. It's a really clean look and sets it up in one giant piece. So it's a really cool product that we got going in there. This is kind of the end goal for most people is having a really full reef display tank. And so we wanted to really highlight that in this room and have a bunch of cool corals. And ultimately a lot of this stuff isn't that difficult to keep. We wanted to put somewhat beginner to intermediate corals in this aquarium to show people what they can thrive for and and an end goal in a really cool way to highlight different things that really is attainable for many hobbyists. All right, guys, so this is an amazing saltwater room with amazing corals. Thank you so much for having me over. I know that a ton of people are about to comment, do you ship? Unfortunately, at the moment, we don't ship. It's something we definitely want to try to do in the future. It's, it's just such a big operation. It's really hard to do and execute properly. And so at the moment, we don't ship. But we're located in downtown Forest Lake, Minnesota. We'd be more than happy to show you guys around if anybody wants to come out and check out our operation. Fantastic. So again, guys, thank you so much for having me out. This is an incredible saltwater room. But hey, guys, if you notice right behind these two, there is the freshwater room. We are about to film a video right there. Maybe it's going to be a two-parter. We don't know yet. We haven't filmed it yet. But be sure to hit that subscribe button so you do not miss those episodes. And thanks for watching, guys. And until the next animal adventure, love the planet and rattle on.